back to the Atrium's Dry Run Frankenstein's Monster tutorial with me Catherine. Today we're going to be colouring in the picture that we drew in the last video using the downloadable PDF Dry Your Own Frankenstein's Monster, Crayola, Bell Tips. Everything we're using today is available to buy from our website. So let's get started. The picture that is featured in the tutorial is coloured in on the computer by a very talented artist Gary Whitlock. If you're drawing along at home, this is totally your own creation. You don't have to use the colours that we're using today. But for purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to use the same colours that are used in the tutorial. So we're just going to go ahead and going to give him a green face. This is a light green Crayola felt tip. Don't worry too much about going over pencil lines. Get the colour everywhere you want the colour to be. So, we're going to give this picture some depth by adding shading, shadows and highlights. So shadows give the picture depth. For instance, these cheekbones here. If the light's coming in from this way, or straight ahead, there'll be a shadow cast underneath here because his cheekbones stand out further than his actual cheeks underneath so there will be a shadow there. On the flip side these bits here will be lighter because they're closer to the light source as well. So we're just going to give him a bit of a green tinge, doesn't look very well. I'm sure we wouldn't be very well, we'd just been put together, stapled together and injected Electrocuted, a bit of green all over, nice and quick. Now you put colour in his ears, don't forget the ears. Don't worry about going over pencil lines either. Right now. Take a paintbrush, put some water on it. Get all over the green. Because they're a water based felt tip, if you add water, the colour will bleed which means that it won't stay in the position it's in, it will go where the water's gone. Just like watercolour paint. It gives it a nice soft edge. So where these harsh, harsh lines here are, add a bit of water and it softens them right on. Oh, because I've put more colour in, up your lines around the edge here, seems darker. You want to leave the areas that are quite light, and will be quite light. See on the nose here, that's where the light source is coming down, that's going to be quite light. Same with the chin, cheekbones, the areas underneath are going to be quite dark. Under the hairline, don't worry about going into his hair. I 
I'm gonna give it dark hair just like Gary has done. So if there's green there we'll be covering that up so I don't once you're happy with it leave it to dry. If you've got a pool of water, dab it with the tissue and it'll take some of that water off. It'll take the colour off as well so if you've got quite dark area get a tissue and just blot it. I'm going to do that. So his forehead is quite dark. Take some of the excess water out and it might brighten him up a little bit. But this is a base coat. See the colour brought up there? If it's too dark, get a bit more water. This is how you would do it with watercolours, but we use Crayola felt tips today. Be able to take a bit of that colour away. It's a bit lighter there. The paper is bending, which gives him a nice. It's giving him a nice scowl there. Right, so if you are a, a fan of horror, well, you may know that zombies have been portrayed in blue, so they've had a blue tinge to their skin. So if you were doing something similar but a zombie, you could leave the bolts out, leave the scars out if you wanted, give them a blue tinge. Totally up to you what you do, they are pictures, this is just a demonstration. I'm just giving some dark areas there. Go in with a smaller brush this time. And give some shade tone to these bolts in his neck. So this is a really fine brush that we're using. You don't have to put water everywhere but where you do put water that colour will seep into that area. So just be careful if you Going into another colour here that you don't go too far. Make sure one area is dry if you don't want one colour seeping into the other. The texture of metal is totally different to the texture of skin. You're going to get a lot more areas of light, shadows, reflections on metal than you would with skin. So just be mindful. If you need to make an area a bit darker, don't want to use the felt tip. That was grey that I used. The colour that went on the paper is quite different to what's on the lid. So just be mindful. Maybe use a separate piece of paper just to test it before you go in with the actual colour. If you want a really heavy dark line, wait till that's dry and use your felt tip. Otherwise, what I'm doing here is just going over the same area, trying to blend the colour out a bit more. You want to make sure each side looks even, so this side here is a bit heavier on the right hand side.
and draw as many as you want. Give them to friends, give them to family, keep them all for yourself if you want. We will, we do have an annual Halloween exhibition, so if you want to keep them for then, enter them into that exhibition, get in touch with us using the contact details at the end of this video. Send us a picture of your finished piece or send the actual piece and we'll put it in the exhibition for you. So we'd love to see what you're doing at home or wherever you are in the world. Right, we're going to give them a bit more I'm using the same colour green that I did before. A bit more shading in these darker areas where there's lines, wrinkles. When you're drawing, or when you're colouring, Think about where the light source is coming from. So if the light was coming in this way, these areas here would be lighter, these areas here would be darker. Because your nose sticks out further than your cheekbone, so you would get a shadow here. Sometimes hard to do, hard to think of where shadows would be. Don't worry, it takes practice. You're not going to always get it the first time. And noses are always hard to draw. So the paper's quite dry now. I'm just going in to these areas where we drew earlier to give the picture some shading. Slightly different to the way Gary's done it on our downloadable document. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Not everyone draws the same way either. So just because you can't draw like your friend or someone you admire doesn't mean you can't draw. Everyone can draw. Everyone's got their own style. Right, so I'll give him some shading to his neck here. Obviously your chin is further out than your neck, so you want it to be quite heavy on the shading here. Not too much. Obviously think about where the light's coming from. There will be areas of your neck where light hits. Shirt on that scar. He's not a happy chappy. He's given a bit of shading under his lip there, around his chin. You don't have to go back in with water if you're colouring along with me at home and wherever you are in the world or if you're just watching me. I quite like these lines the way they are. There are some areas where I think a bit of water wouldn't hurt. Just 
just to make the lines a bit less harsh. There will be areas where you want a harsh light, so around the chin there, that needs to be quite a dominant line. And especially around these angles here. I think they look quite good. You might not. Just depends. So as we said in the last video, the top of your ear is always in line with your eyes. The bottom of your ear is always in line with your nose. Your eyes are actually halfway up your head. They're not right at the top. They're not somewhere near the top, they're halfway. We'll do that in another video another day. Today we are doing Frankenstein's monster. Using a tutorial created by Gary Whitlock, very talented artist in Hartlepool. I'm not going to go over all the lines here because I think some of them are quite good, quite harsh. I'm soften some of them. There will be areas in the face that are darker than others. And I am using quite a small brush. So I've got more control of the area that I'm working on. Right, to leave that to dry. Now we're going to do, let's work on a small piece of metal. Now he's got three staples in his head, top of his head. Go down one side and a little bit across the bottom. The light in my mind for this picture is coming this way. So with the metal, it reflects light a lot. So this area here is going to be very light. So we're not necessarily going to bring the colour all the way up to this top corner but this bottom corner here is going to be the darkest area so that's where we're going to put this grey. Some of the colours are quite deceiving so just be aware. I'm not bringing the water right to this top corner because that's in my mind, the lightest area, we want to leave that white, but this darker area at the bottom, we want to blend out that as much as we can, to give the effects of shadow. Load your brush up with water, just go for that L shape, up the top, along the bottom, a bit in the middle. You're feeling down, bring it up and round, but don't touch that top corner. Once you're happy with it, leave it. Walk away from it. You can always go back to it later and add more. If you add too much, you run the risk of not being able to take bits away from it. But with it being a water based medium we're using, we can add water and blot it out. It's a totally different way of using felt tips. I'm 
quite enjoying it. I hope you are too at home. Let us know what you think as well, leave a comment, get in touch, show us what you've been doing at home. We are all at home together, even though we're not together. So why not show us what you've been doing? Start a conversation about how good art is. I love it. Can't get enough of it. Very lightly. Very, very lightly. Try and get the very tip. So just go along that skyline. Don't have to. Right, I'm going to give him some black hair. Now this was just very quickly done. In the drawn stages, you might want to be a bit more careful. Just going over the lines. Spiky, shaggy. Uh, you might give them a totally different hairstyle to what Gary has, to what I have. He is, after all, your creation. Same again. might want to do it differently, but I'm not going all over with this pen. Try something. Same way we have with the other bits. Put the black on. Very fine paintbrush. Add a bit of water. break up those heavy lines. Take your time, there's no rush. You've got all the time in the world. Go in between all those nooks and crannies. Give him a great hairstyle. He deserves one. He doesn't have a smile on his face, because he might not like that hairstyle. He might want a totally different hairstyle. That might be why he's so unhappy. He might be absolutely fine with the bolts in his neck, but he doesn't like. Why not let us know what your favourite monster is? Some people like Dracula. Some people like Frankenstein, the mummy, the original monsters of Halloween. Or the horror genre in general. It doesn't have to be Halloween to watch a scary film. If you like that kind of thing. I do. There we go. You might want to colour it all in with your black pen, but I think that looks quite good. Quite fitting. You can always go back in after. If 
you are using these felt tips, just be careful. Using a lighter colour on a darker colour can leave quite a stain on that tip. So just be careful, look after your tools and they will look after you. Back in with the water, paintbrush, very thin paintbrush. And some little yellow eyes. So I can't see him being quite healthy. You might want to give him beautiful blue eyes. Totally up to you is your monster. Lovely yellow eyes. Matches the sun. Beautiful. Leave that to dry a bit. And I'm going to give him purple top. Why not? Get some purple in there. Right, I'm going around the lines that we drew initially. So it's going to be the, the defining lines. When you draw on fabric, think about the way it flows over the body. What sort of fabric is it? Is it quite stiff, like denim? Is it quite soft like a t-shirt? How does it flow? This looks to be quite like a... cotton shirt of some kind, polo neck maybe? So the light that was coming in this way is still going to affect his clothing. This side is mainly going to be in shadow, especially on under these bolts. So I'm just going to give it a light, light brush with some water. Get the majority of colour everywhere. It's not a highly reflective fabric, so you want that colour to be evenly distributed, base coat. And then you can always go back in, as we did with the face, and more detail. Blot out any areas you want to get rid of water. For every area that I've coloured as well, I've used exactly the same shade. So I haven't used a darker green. On his face, it's all the same shade, just adding water has spread the colour around to give it a lighter shade in certain areas. So, the, the light's coming down this way. These areas are going to be in shadow. And a bit more dark colour there. Around his neck, roll that down. You can dress him in wherever you want, but I'm just working off a document that Gary made, which is available on our website. Is at the end of the video. I think it's about done. I need to finish the eye. Just 
dark and for his pure pop. I'm not gonna add any colour to that. Just in case. Tiny bit just to give a bit of shade to that very furrowed brow. I guess he is Frankenstein after all. Frankenstein's monster. Needs a very heavy, heavy brow. enjoyed this video let us know in the comments section get in touch we're on Facebook we're on Twitter let us know what you think we'd love to hear from you let us know what you're getting up to what you'd like to see us do in the future we'd love to hear from everybody in the whole world or even just in town Hope you enjoyed it.